All right, what's up, everybody? So I just pushed version 0.2 of Docker UI to GitHub on the master branch. And I thought I'd go over a couple things that's changed from last week till now. So uh, the readme is much better. We have install steps, but we also have this Docker UI container. So I went ahead and created a container in Docker to uh, get this UI up and running quickly with one command being served by Docker. So you serve this by Docker and you can manage Docker. So um, here's the image on the Docker index, pretty simple, my GitHub and then Docker UI. So we're going to go through getting this up and running on your server. Okay, so I'm on my server, we can type Docker PS. I've got one container running right now. So the first thing we need to do is whenever you launch Docker D in daemon mode, we need to set the attack H option so that it doesn't just listen on localhost by default, but it can be accessible by the uh, machine's IP. So I run Docker via supervisor. So let me go into my uh, supervisor script and you can see this command here, okay? So uh, we run Docker with the TAC D option to demonize it, and the important part is this TAC H, and then I'm just passing in my machine's IP address on my LAN with the default Docker port of 4243. So by doing this, we can access the remote API via another machine and within a container um, run by Docker. So you need a set this TAC H option and get your Docker D up and running. So after we have that, to start the container, you'll need to do the uh, Docker pool, um, Crosby Michael slash Docker UI. I've already got that done. So to launch it, we need to do doc run, Docker run, and then the repository image name we want to run the docker UI command and then we need one argument which is TAC E and this is your docker remote API endpoint so it's basically what we set as the TAC H in the when running our docker daemon so 192.168.9.42.43 and we're good so we can run that command and this should run the Docker UI container, and uh, oh, I forgot to. Usually, when you run this, you'll want the Docker run tac D to demonize it. I forgot, but uh, we should be good. So if we do a doc ps, we can see our the Docker UI containers up and running. And if we look over at ports, we can see it's serving on port 9000. So let's hop back into the browser and check this out. So let's go to port 9000 and we should see the Docker UI here. So uh, basically down at the bottom added a couple uh, status version informations. On the setting page not much has changed. We've got containers, number of images and whatever. So if we go to containers uh, we can see we can actually see the Docker UI container running from Docker UI, kind of like Inception, but uh, you can see that um, you'll notice that we have these checkboxes. So, uh, and then there's this actions drop down. So now you can select multiple containers and images. And these two displays both support batch operations, and we can do. Uh, basic things such as start, stop, kill, and remove. So if I scroll down here, we'll go down to the bottom and just delete some of these. So let's click four or five of these containers here and then go back up to the top and we'll just remove these. So actions, remove, should get this display here saying all these containers were removed. If we scroll back down, we can see that they're gone now. So this makes it a lot easier when you're managing a bunch of stuff or uh, you played around a little too much 
with Docker and you have all of these containers. If you just want to remove them all, check it and go at it. Okay. So let's filter this back down to only the running ones. Um, nothing's really changed on the containers page or the images page. Um, there is a modal whenever you're on an image and you want to create a container from it. This modal comes up and allows you to do that. You can input your command and different different options here for that. Okay. Um, back on images, we have batch operations again. Check an image, hit remove, and we get that. We get the display here that that happened. Okay. So um, after that, the last thing is Docker file support within the UI. So if you go on the images page, hit build image, we get this drop down with an editor and this allows you to uh, do a, a build out a image from a Docker file. So we can say from Ubuntu, let's do a run, apt get update, and then we'll set our command to bin echo hello docker UI. Okay, and we can hit build. Um, there's these spinners now. Uh, it's just a nice little touch so you know that something's going on. A uh, little bit of feedback on any long running operations on the UI. So that's done. We got a container built. We can see the ID. We can close this modal. We refresh this page. And there's our container we just built from the Docker file in the UI. We can click it, hit create, and hit create again. And we have this container running. So basically, you can go from a Docker file or just type whatever in the UI, create it, run it, and do whatever you need. We can refresh that again. It stopped. And we'll just remove that from here. So back to containers and we just got a UI up. So uh, that's basically what the UI version point two is. Um, if you have any issues or comments or some features you'd like to see implemented, just let me know on the uh, GitHub repo. Thanks.